All right, hi everybody. I'm Rosie Stevenson, good night. And some of you know me as user Rosie Step. I am here with two of my colleagues, or at least one, Sydney Poor, and the other, Emily Templewood, will hopefully be able to join us unless there's some kind of a technical glitch. Oh, looks like there she is. There's Emily. Hi, everybody. Sorry, my computer crashed. The technology works. We are here to speak to you regarding perspectives on Wikipedia's content gender gap. All right, so what do the three of us have in common? We are co-founders of something called the Wiki Women's User Group. You heard a speaker a little while ago talk about chapters and thematic organizations and that it only takes three people to start a user group. Well, we were those three people. We started it this July at Wikimania. And now our user group has 77 members. So what is our scope? The scope of Wiki Women's User Group is women's issues, broadly construed. We support editors, we support content, we support events. There is our um, URL. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. And then we'll hand this off to Emily, and she'll hand it off to Sydney. And we all have a different perspective. We want to share those with you. Let's talk about the difference between content gender gap and the editor gender gap. Much has been said, much has been written about the editor gender gap. Some statistics say 10%, 12%, 15%, but surely less than 20% of the editors of Wikipedia are women. There are different reasons that people think why there are so few of us versus men, and we are not going to tackle that issue in this presentation. What we are going to tackle, though, is something called the content gender gap. And what is the content gender gap? Well, the content gender gap is what's missing from Wikipedia. What, what are those articles that aren't written yet? Why they're not written, who hasn't written them, should men write them, should women write them, those are separate topics. But we want to tackle the subject of there's about 15% of the biographies on English language Wikipedia are about women versus 85% are about men. What can we do about that? Well, there's a lot we can do about that, and we've started to do it. So a brief history. 1957, in Venezuela, we had someone write an encyclopedia and 3% of the biographies here, 3% of these were about women. So if I told you that 15% of the biographies on English language Wikipedia are about women, you'd say pretty good, much improvement over this. But I think we can do a whole lot better. And why? Well, you see there a quote from Simone de Beauvoir. I don't need to read it back to you, but it's important. It's striking because if women hold up 50% of the sky, we should have more than 15% of the biographies about women. And it's not just the biographies. Like I said, it's also women's works. And by that, I mean the art that women created, the books that we wrote, the conferences that we created, and so on. So let's go ahead and tackle that. I'm going to talk about something called Wiki Project Women in Red. And then when I hand it off to Emily and to Sydney, they're going to talk about other projects and about other um, a Wikipedia and in residence program and grants. So here we go. Um, I've been editing Wikipedia since 2007. I've written maybe 4,000 articles, maybe a little bit more in that period of time. And it struck me that I'm a woman and I'm a writer, and we didn't have a project for that. So with the support of some other Wikipedians, I created Wiki Project Women. I don't know how many 
articles we initially had in our scope. Our scope is women writers and works written by women. But I can tell you that it was a pretty small number in comparison to the biographies and works written by men. And now we have, since 2014, just over 25,000 articles within our scope. I'd say that's pretty good. Fast forward to 2015. Come on, page. Fast forward to 2015, and I was invited by a gentleman called Roger Bamkin of the UK to present with him at Wikimania 2015 on something unique, something that wasn't going on at the time, and that was let's create a project. And that project, like Wiki Project Women Writers, would be a project just dedicated to writing articles about not just the writers, but other women. We had Wiki Project scientists, Wiki Project artists, and so forth about women, but let's do one that is just women broadly, red links about women. I was in. I bought it hook, line, and sinker, and I said, yes, I'm in. Let's write up the proposal, and hopefully we'll get to Wikimania, and hopefully we'll get to talk about it. And we did. We got to Wikimania, and we announced it. This wiki project just dedicated to coming up with red lists of articles and clicking that red link and writing that article about women. So in our first month, well, it was only a half a month, it was from... Um, July 11th to July 31st, we had about a thousand articles. And now, six months later, we've written almost 9,000 articles. Now, would some of those articles have been written even if we didn't have women in red? Surely they would have. But I have to say that some of what we've done, and we've done a lot, we've got a great group of writers, is important, and I think we can replicate it. So what have we done? We found in our um, second, third month of existence that the Smithsonian reached out to us and said, we're going to have an edit-a-thon. Can you support us doing something virtual? We said yes. It was on Asian Pacific American women. And our team of writers, just virtually all over the world, we wrote in three days 36 articles that supported the event that was happening at the Smithsonian. The following month, or actually later that month in September, we thought, well, we don't need you know, an organization to host an edit-a-thon. We can do this virtually. We'll just do it virtually. We're going to do it women in leadership. So instead of creating Wiki Project Women in Leadership, we just went ahead and did an edit-a-thon, virtual, online. And we created hundreds of articles. The next thing we did is we got a call from the Guggenheim, and we supported the Guggenheim with their um, women in architecture and design, and we created 164 articles virtually online. And then we did women in science in collaboration with the New York Academy of Science, and we created almost 350 articles. In December, we went back to doing something by ourselves. We thought December, religion, okay, let's tackle it. 129 articles. We're now in January. We just started the one Women in Music, and we created so far 138 articles, and we're still working on it. And when I say we, we invite people. We spam talk pages. We're telling them what we're doing and when we're doing it. We've done it for three days. We've done it for seven days, 10 days, 21 days. In March, it's going to be 31 days when we do art and feminism. And we get people excited. They might just participate in the one event. They might decide, I really like this. I'm going to participate in a whole bunch of these events. You don't have to sign up. Just write the articles. But if you want to sign up, we've got a meetup page for every one of the events we host. And we'd be glad to have you put your name as a participa participant or not. Just do the work. So I told you I wrote a lot of content, over 4,000 articles. In the last year or so, I've done some concentration on articles about women's conferences. You know, suffragettes from 100 years ago women interested in peace conferences from maybe 90 years ago. And I had an epiphany. I'm putting this out to the universe. Universe, please listen. Let us convene a conference, an international thematic conference 
on content gender gap. Let's talk about replicating some of the things we've done well. We, we haven't done everything perfectly. We could use some help. But surely the other language Wikipedias could benefit from what we've learned and from what we've done and we from them. Let's bring in subject matter experts. Let's bring in people who understand project management. And let's help each other move this forward. This is my perspective. And now I'm going to turn it over to Emily Templewood for hers. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Emily. I don't know if you can see me. Um, oh, wow. Now I can see myself. This is exciting. Um, I'm user Kailana on English Wikipedia. I've been editing since April 2007. And I was involved in founding the Wiki Project Women Scientists and Wiki Project Women's Health. So I'm going to talk about how we've used those two projects to address the content gender gap and some of the ramifications of the content gender gap on Wikipedians and on people around the world. Um, so the content gender gap affects more than just, you know, articles about dresses or whatever. It's a fundamental problem that affects basically any, anything that women are interested in or anything that affects women. Um, so in 2012, if I'm getting my dates right, we started Wiki Project Women Scientists and we started out with about 1,400 articles. Um, and I literally just checked, we finally hit 5,000 this week with 5,051 women scientists. So this is awesome, right? We're finally making strides in this one area and writing women back into history, as I like to call it, is so important because my gener I straddle the generation of grew up growing up with the internet versus not growing up with the internet, right? Um, I was seven, I think, seven when Wikipedia, you know, was founded. Um, and in the past 15 years, you know, I, you know, I've, I've grown up and Wikipedia has become a really integral part of my generation's life. Um, but if you ask my little sister, who's 18, oh yeah, the internet, that's always been there. So it's a very different mindset. And unfortunately, it's kind of led to a mindset of if it's not on Wikipedia, it doesn't exist. And we've all kind of experienced that shock of like searching for something and, oh my god, that's not an article. And as a Wikipedian, my reaction is, okay, I'm going to write that article. But to a non-Wikipedian, that's, oh, it must not be important. So um, behind me, I have some posters of women scientists. I don't know if you can see them. Um, but I have Barbara McClintock is one of them. And her Wikipedia biography a few years ago featured extensive discussion about how she never got married and she never had kids and she didn't have close relationships and she was just generally not a warm and fuzzy person. Kind of neglecting the fact that she made scientific discoveries that completely revolutionized biology. So it's important for us to face this content gender gap head on because otherwise we're not telling these stories that need to be told and we're not, as the world's premier repository of information, we're not including people who need to be included. But this also has some really important implications for people all around the world. Um, and women scientists are important historically, women scientists are important as a source of inspiration for young women. But women's health has really immediate ramifications. We've all heard um, Doc James's paper on, you know, how the vast majority of doctors and medical students use Wikipedia. Well, this has huge implications for women's health because women's health is a huge area of content gender gap that we haven't really addressed yet. Um, so the first thing I wanted to bring up was the World Health Organization um, discusses initiatives for women's health and lists various areas that that need to be like worked on. Um, and from my from my cursory investigation this morning, none of them have an article above C class. That's really concerning because women around the world, just like men around the world, rely on information from Wikipedia about their health. And if it's specific to women, it's more likely to be of lower quality. Another area where this really affects women um, is in the area of trans women's health. Our articles on trans health are, to put it politely, a complete disaster. Um, and that is something that 
needs to be changed and that's why we have this project right so that people can learn about their health and we can empower them um, and the last thing I wanted to bring up before we turn things over to Sydney I think I'm on on track time wise is the propensity or the um, the way that content errors have been perpetuated through this area of women's health um, um, I'm not major major errors um, that we sometimes find in other areas but women's health is like particularly important um, and I just want to illustrate this with with a quick example of, of something I found just the other day um, so my main women's health writing is in gynecologic oncology so cancers of the uterus of the ovaries the cervix vagina etc and I when I was writing about therapy, um, pelvic radiotherapy, which involves, you know, radiating, irradiating the pelvis to kill any cancer cells that are there. Um, I realized that our article on a vaginal dilator, which is an instrument that basically keeps it from collapsing in on itself when, when there's radiation that affects the vaginal mucous membranes, um, sorry, science nerd, was redirecting to a speculum, which is an instrument used during gynecologic examinations to look at the cervix. And this really struck me as incredibly harmful because first of all, the redirect had been created something like 10 years ago and no one had really noticed. And if I was a patient looking up a treatment that my doctor had prescribed for me, I would be kind of horrified <laughs> thinking that, you know, these two things were the same and they're not. So it's areas like this where we we really need to focus on the content gender gap and to add another uh, nugget of information Wikipedia still doesn't have an article on pediatric gynecology which is really really sad to me it's an important subspecialty and I'm in the process of writing one but the fact that we've gone 15 years without that is shocking and really indicative of what we need where we need to go and how we need to proceed with the future of the content gender gap. So I hope that you're interested in joining either Wiki Project Women's Health or Women Scientists or both. Both would be nice. Um, and come, you know, Im improve an article here, check some terminology there, write a biography. It all makes a difference. And writing women back into history, making sure that, you know, women who use Wikipedia Zero and midwives and everyone has access to information about women's health is incredibly important. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to Sydney. Hello. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, Sydney, we can hear you. Okay, good. So, um, um, hello, I'm Sydney Poor. I go by, by the name of Flo Knight on Wiki, and I chose my name because um, it's kind of to honor Florence Nightingale. So this kind of is a very nice transition from Emily's talk into my talk, because I also have a very strong area interest in women's health. In my work as a Wikipedia in residence with Cochrane Collaboration, I am kind of working with Emily on this topic. But really, what I'm planning to talk about today is really not. Um, you know, what has been accomplished so much in terms of the content is kind of one of the ways we can go about doing it. And over the past 15 years, one of the things that's happened um, with the Wikimedia movement is that we have developed what I consider a pretty robust grants program. But unfortunately, too often the grants have not been focused on things that have could improve the, the gender content gap. Now that has changed over the last few years because of the interest of people that are in the grants program as well as people like Emily and others that have stepped up and volunteered to be on um, some of the grant committees that, that evaluate grants. So really what I would like to do is talk about um, in general the, the types of grants that are out there and available um, and they include the projects um, and event grants, which is pretty much anybody um, that has uh, kind of aligned with our mission can go there, suggest a grant, and can can really begin working on uh, you know something that would improve content for women. 
There's also individual engagement grants, which is really um, something that's focused towards individuals working on a project over um, a time period that's very specific, specific and would have um, uh, funds available for project management management support, as well as grants that are annual plan grants that would be available for um, organizations usually that are affiliated with Wikimedia Foundation and that they would get funds for over a year's time. Through all of these programs, people have in the past and can going forward um, have programs that are specifically addressed towards the, the gender gap. One of the special programs that we did last year was the Inspire campaign, and through this campaign, we were able to um, address uh, the gender gap in a very major way um, and we were able to um, come up with 16 different projects that were um, made to address either the content gender gap or the lack of women editing um, as well. Um, I want to particularly highlight one that I think is a very special one um, to my heart because um, it is involving the state of West Virginia, which is where I was born and raised. Um, a university there saw a very strong need to adjust uh, the content lacking um, about women from West Virginia and women in general, and they're very strongly committed to our movement and in changing it. So they wanted to come to us as partners. So they um, are have hired um, someone named Emily, excuse me, Kelly Dole to be our first Wikipedia in residence um, this addressing the gender gap. And um, she was started last fall, and she's working internally at West Virginia University to um, inside the classroom as well as holding edit-a-thons and other events to get content onto Wikipedia. So one of the key things is really figuring out how to get all of this working together so that we have the projects, for example, that um, Emily is suggesting for women's health. So we would be able to have, you know, M, uh, Kelly, you know, going to her university's medical people and, and explaining to them about what they can do to help with the women's health. And so really it's a matter of pulling this all together and supporting it with good funds. And, and, I, and this is a way that I see that we can go forward to addressing the, the content issues um, that are that are serious issues that are causing us to have um, the biases um, that in our content today. And that's that's really all, all, all I have to say right, right now. And but if um, I think we want to have time for questions, if anyone has any questions, and it'd probably be easiest if Rosie, you know, we hand it back to Rosie and let her handle the question and answer period. Thank you, Sydney and Emily. Really appreciate what you have to say. Do we have any questions? Yes, Lila. First, thank you so much for giving the overview um, of of the of the challenges and what what you guys are doing uh, to solve them. This is, I believe, an extremely important topic for us. How can you uh, go over a little bit? How can people find um, the gap article? So, what? How can they plug? get involved um, more easily um, and uh, find the kind of content that needs to be filled in because a lot of times we don't know where the gaps are. Sure, sure. Good so, question. Um, so, Lila, with WikiPrat, oh, sorry, go ahead. Lila. So, Lila asked, how can we let people know what those articles are, the ones that are missing or the ones that need improvement? I'll make sure that um, I go to the um, event page that's listed there and I'll put a link up for Women in Red um, and I'll make sure that somehow you'll also be able, if you link to this YouTube, you'll have access to our three usernames are part of this. but. Um, once you get to the Women in Red project, for example, you'll see a nav box at the bottom of it. And that nav box has links for red lists. So we have people who crowdsource and put together red lists of different, um, of different sorts for women in music, women in leadership, women in science, women in social science, women writers, Antarctic, women researchers, we have a red list for that. Indigenous women, 
we have a red list for that. So we have people who that's what they like to do. They like to come up with these lists of names. We sort them um, by country and just click one of those links and start writing the article. Often the people who are crowdsourcing and adding these um, names to these red lists are also putting references down, so that helps you from the get-go. You might have three reference links that you can use to help you write that article. You'll also see in that nav box um, links for the different events that we've held. You'll see how the meetups are structured, basically giving you um, pointers to red lists and to categories that you might want to use. But the short answer is go to WP colon women in red and if you go to the bottom of the page you'll see lists of red links. Click on any of those lists and it'll take you to pages where you can see missing articles. And like I said, it's crowdsourced. So add more names to that, please. Thanks, Lila. Any other questions? Yes. Can we, can we use the question microphone, please? It's on that same topic where um, I think Emily mentioned that there were really important articles that weren't written or had hardly received any attention. But I think the guy who was talking about bots showed a, a nice grid of top and then top importance and then class, quality class. And I think it was like 15,000 or something were top and start, you know? And it's like, those are like our most important articles and nobody really works on them. It's a lot easier to work on a biography or to work on a, um, you know, some a military battle. We get a lot of attention on military battles. Um, Architectural buildings, <laughs> but working on really hard articles like that, it doesn't doesn't get it done, done enough. And it's not a content gender thing in a lot of ways. It's a it's an overall thing in the Wikipedia. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ben. All right. So is it time for Brit Britta? Britta, you're up. Thank you, everyone.